The Mondeo may be what car magazine's car of the year, but in the same segment, Citroen is set to launch the C5 in April, and they hope it's going to continue the tradition of innovation that began with cars like the DS and the SM. But can it really compete against competition like the Mondeo, the Laguna, the Passat? Ken Gibson went to a sneak preview in Spain last week to find out. I want you to imagine a motoring equivalent to football's Champions League, where your team is drawn against Manchester United, Real Madrid and Barcelona. Well, that's the task facing Citroën's C5. It's just joined the new Super League of big family cars up against the Mondeo, the Laguna and the Passat. And that is a mighty tall order. And as you can see, the looks of the C5 are conservative with a capital C. I think even the assistance of Claudia Schiffer from Citroen Zara adverts would uh, be needed to get the heart pulsing with this car. But they're all about driving. So let's go and see what this car's like inside. Citroen have always been noted for their expertise in suspension. It's always given the cars a very cushioned ride. The C5 features Hydroactive 3. It sounds like a blockbuster movie, but it's a very smart electronic suspension system. The system basically varies the height of the car according to the speed and road surfaces, which in turn actually improves the fuel economy. Very handy. If the C5 doesn't quite match the Mondeo's magnificent handling capabilities, it's pretty impressive. And once you get it into sport mode, it can perform fairly lively as well. It sort of has a very comfortable ride. It glides along. It never feels hurried. And actually, you have to keep looking down at the speedometer because you're making pretty rapid progress. This will be a very, very good long-distance touring machine or a repmobile for going up and down motorways. I have to say I'm impressed by the new 2.2-litre turbo diesel as well. Apart from on turnover and at low down speeds, you cannot tell it's a diesel. It's also surprisingly nippy. 0 to 60 comes up in just under 10 seconds. It'll do over 126 miles an hour if you were allowed and it's got a lot of low down torque as well, so overtaking's excellent. Plus, of course, you've got 44.6 miles to the gallon, and that's combined, which is pretty impressive for a big car. I like the look of the cabin as well. Apart from being very spacious, the materials are pretty plush, has a quality feel to it. All of the instruments are very, very well laid out. Ergonomically, it's excellent. The C5 is also full of lots of clever, very user-friendly technical touches. Things like automatic headlights that come on when it gets dark or you go into a tunnel. And apart from the satellite navigation system, Citroen have developed a voice activation unit where you can put the CD on or use the telephone simply by voice commands. I think that's a really helpful gadget. The leather clad 2.2 HDI we've tested with all the extras and gadgets will cost around £20,000. The same as the top of the range 3 litre V6 C5. So, can the Citroen C5 win the Champions League of motoring? I don't think so. But it reminds me a lot of Leeds United. It's capable of giving everybody a game because it's a surprisingly good all-rounder. And the good news for Citroen is, it doesn't have to win the championship. It just has to compete. And I think it will. So the C5 needs to combine the comfort and refinement of a saloon car with the space and practicality of a people carrier. And it is an important launch for Citroen because it replaces both the XM and the Zara. So it's got to be designed to fulfill two functions. As a rep's long distance mile muncher, it needs to look the part and offer comfort and that sophistication and refinement. Whilst at the weekends, there's got to be plenty of room on board for the family, the kids and the dog.